And now we turn to our last part of the defense stream that would not be complete without a reflection from one of the world's top cybersecurity experts who served as cybersecurity advisor to two different US presidential administrations. It is my great pleasure to announce that the answer to the question on how vital is cooperation to maintaining transatlantic technological superiority will be shared with you by Ms. Melissa Hathaway, President of Hathaway Global Strategies, a cybersecurity advisor to George W. Bush and Barack Obama administrations, and a new old member of the CyberSec Program Committee. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you for being with us here, especially that, from what I understand, it's a very early morning now in Washington. Great pleasure to be here with everybody. And, um, and I look forward to sharing with you some thoughts about why and um, the emerging technologies really require us to have this transatlantic partnership um, and closer cooperation on the development of these uh, technologies. I have prepared some slides to help guide the conversation. Um, so if we could bring those up, uh, that would be wonderful. Um, and uh, if you could advance to the next slide. It's really important that as part of the defense stream, we start to really think about that the innovations in technology, tomorrow's technologies, whether it's quantum computing, artificial intelligence, uh, the crypto uh, currencies and, and distributed ledgers, we need to think about that, that that innovation will be in fact used for warfare and used in unexpected ways. Next slide. And so we need to have this, uh, this transatlantic cooperation is necessary on these critical and emerging technologies. And, um, and many of the innovations are coming from um, uh, the small and medium businesses and the innovation centers in Europe, but many of those innovations are also coming from the United States and China. So it's important to understand where there are strategic moves happening between the United States and China so that Europe can, and we can have like-minded democracies and the Technology 12 working together. Next slide. So in the United States, um, we had a, a strategy that was announced under President Trump and will largely continue now under President Biden. And it was how do we promote the national security innovation base and, um, and, and continue to promote the US technology advantage, which uh, by definition extends to our European allies. And, uh, and we highlight 20 technologies that were strategic to us and that were important um, for advancing uh, further research and development and uh, cooperation and that you know in, in is from advanced computing to autonomous systems to biotechnology which has shown to be so important of the investments the United States and Europe and others made for the last 20 years were able to advance us to get to a vaccine in less than a year um, energy technologies, semiconductors and microelectronics, um, and of course, quantum information science and artificial intelligence are some of the key uh, technology areas that were highlighted as part of this um, initiative. Next slide. A few months earlier, China had also identified some technologies that were very important to it. Um, if you could advance to the next slide, please. Um, and it was important that they identified um, 23 critical technologies were added to their expert control and licensing list, which means that there's going to be further restrictions on those key technologies. What was interesting is uh, it was focused on agriculture and gene editing where many of the new technologies that they're focused on for their research and development. But they also had artificial intelligence, uh, information countermeasures, which was for big data and um, for some of the, the exquisite algorithms that they've embedded into TikTok and some of their new technologies, um, unmanned aerial vehicles and space technologies, as well as uh, information defense technologies and the like. They also, as you know, um, in December published their 14th five-year plan and it was ratified last week. So next slide. Um, they identified key technologies that were important for China's self-reliance in technology as a national strategic pillar that at the forefront is about microelectronics and semiconductors to drive the next generation technologies, artificial intelligence and, and, and quantum information 
information science was also there, and exploration of, um, of space, of the deep sea and the polar regions. Uh, they have identified that they really want to uh, grow um, to be a global leader in innovation and accelerate their defense modernization within these key technologies. Next slide. So we need to talk about some of these technologies and um, and the race. Uh, right now, the China is outspending the United States and the United States, Europe and Canada and all of our allies together, 15 to one in uh, patent filings and AI, artificial intelligence and deep learning. And, um, and so they have made it a national priority. It's a national priority for national security, for economic security, for their military and defense. And we have to recognize this and start to pool our necessary research dollars together and start to identify where we need to be. Next slide. And where we need to be is, is we need to understand artificial intelligence, machine learning, the mathematics behind it um, that will, and the big data behind it, the data resources that will be required in order to get those algorithms, the mathematics, to help us reach intelligence, intelligent decisions and effective decisions, um, and that the mathematics have been proven and can't be manipulated. Next slide. The opportunities around it of artificial intelligence use cases range from, as we know, autonomous vehicles, um, and we've already seen autonomous drones and other things, but now we'll actually be able to apply these to um, trucks and cars, et cetera. We already have smart buildings, um, but we'll start to meet our green agenda and the environmental uh, requirements that we've had with the Paris Accord for 2050 of emissions. We're starting to see personal digital assistants move forward uh, using artificial intelligence to help us make decisions and take actually personnel or people out of the equation for the first two to three um, questions that you might have. The financial services industry has also been using big data um, to help deal with fraud um, and uh, conduct risk assessments. And I can imagine this being applied in the defense and military sectors after we start to collect more and more data through sensors and autonomous systems, and then start to give us an understanding of warning and risk. And then finally, the medical researchers have been using, um, uh, are using the artificial intelligence, the broader, uh, uh, data science in order to help get to uh, better screening um, and understanding of complex compounds, the chemistry that is and the physics that are going to be required for the next generation drugs. Next slide. But artificial intelligence and machine learning can in fact be spoofed. Just like we think about cybersecurity, we need to start thinking about the penetration testing, the big data, the math behind these, and when will they be weaponized? We're starting to see there are at least three areas that we should be thinking about for the weaponization of artificial intelligence. Um, first of all is the, um, the data must be robust and diversified. If we're using um, uh, minimal sets of data, then um, it will be easy to skew the model from, uh, if you think about it as a bell curve, from, uh, from the bell of the curve to the tails of the curve, the left and the right sides, where, um, uh, and uh, thinking about it as pushing those things. So it'll start to uh, make a bad decision or reclassify a decision that the math had actually thought about. If you start to think about that, then what could that reclassification be? Well, it could actually say that uh, the, the car or the automobile or the, the truck was a trolley versus a tank. And, um, and that might be very important um, or uh, other things. <clears throat> Adversarial, there's also the algorithms um, of, the, of the thinking about the making an incorrect decision. So uh, one of the key test places is that our engineers that are behind the artificial intelligence have made specific decisions and, um, and really assumptions about the physical world that are now coded in the mathematics. And so, uh, a really good example of is an autonomous vehicle is driving down the road and it has a sees a stop sign which is a very particular uh, color and uh, shape and um, when it is actually modified with spray paint or something um, the color is wrong the car may not classify or the math may not classify that as a stop sign and go through the stop sign there are many physical assumptions that have gone into the math that are going to be pretty easily tricked 
And so we have to start to think about those things and um, and really red team the math so that we don't have mistakes in the classification. And then finally, um, uh, again, it, it's about the data and the math uh, and uh, the model inversion. So again, there's a decision or there's an assumption behind the math uh, that you can start to um, you can start to skew the data um, by feeding it and modifying um, the data just a little bit so that the, the math behind it will start to, again, de reclassify or, um, or and worse, it will actually start to, uh, if we had something that was supposed to be anonymous or masked, you can, in fact, actually start to get to um, uh, uh, revealing the true identity or, or whatever behind the math. So we need to start to think about the algorithms are the brains of AI. They were created by people. People make assumptions. The math is not always perfect. Um, the data is not always a large data set. And so therefore we need to be thinking about these things because these, these, the next generation technologies will be weaponized. Next slide. Um, and uh, But AI, we've talked about this. We want it to be transparent. We want it to be safe. We want it to be secure. Um, and there's been a number of accords where we're talking about this at a policy level um, that we can't put uh, safety at risk, that we need to ensure the traceability of the data sets and the math, um, and that we need to address the systemic rich, uh, risk that's being introduced by um, these uh, autonomous systems. So. Um, as part of some of the principles that we have uh, published within uh, the G20 and in Europe and up in Canada, uh, you know, that we need to have a security approach by design, that we need to have the traceability, the validation, the verification of the math and the, and the data behind it, uh, and that we need to think about a, um, a machine uh, learning security um, and the like. Next slide. Finally, um, the, we need to be thinking about the new use cases for artificial intelligence and machine learning. There's the optimization for aerospace and defense. There's the chemistry behind um, uh, that can be applied. There's the materials sciences uh, that can be applied. Artificial intelligence and machine learning can also, um, can, you'll see it in many use cases. Uh, and that is all going to be foundational to computational computing and cryptography as well as we're moving forward. Next slide. So we do have shared interest for a more secure future. We need to work together on uh, these emerging technologies. We need to have shared investment for the research and development. We need to think about the export control and licensing restrictions that have emerged in the United States, Europe, and China. We need to address market access um, and ensure that we're working together um, on that market access and the future of these technologies and, and anticipating when they will be used for harm and actually putting in those safety controls, the traceability, the verification and validation. And then finally, as, in, as, as tensions continue to rise and the decoupling between China and the United States, it will be really important for the transatlantic cooperation to work together and to expand to the Technology 12 or to our other like-minded nations so that we're working together to secure our future. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you, Melissa, for a very thorough and really fascinating presentation. I bet there will be a lot for policymakers to take out from that. Have a great day as well.